So I'm Thomas Demand. I'm living in Berlin. I studied sculpture in Düsseldorf and London at the Goldsmith College. And uh, after living there for a few years, I went back to Germany to live in Berlin, where I'm working now with um, the work you see around here. So what I'm doing basically is I make a sculpture first. Everything you see here is life-size. It's a, made out of paper. And I photograph the, the sculpture, I film the sculpture after that then. And usually after that I just get rid of the sculpture, build a new one and make a new photograph. What you see here in the first gallery is uh, a series of photographs called Flare, where I play around with the different impacts of light behind paper leaves and try to find the, uh, the moment when there's an emo emotional surplus coming into a photograph. So you just suddenly you have a sentimental feeling about something. That's one aspect. The other aspect is that by, by doing a series of 29 photographs in here, you just, you know, you have a, um, you, you, you assume that there's something like the light is going off and on, or it's morning, or it's, you know, uh, early spring in the beginning, and then it's becoming autumn or something. So you have this moment of, there's this idea of time going through the whole thing as well. And that is preparing you for, go, for the next piece, which is called Hof, where you see the same leaves, more or less, but then they, in a totally narrative context. So you, you fold the camera pans um, like an Edward Mybridge photograph. It pans on the back side of a, um, of a building, on a wall, and just tries to follow something, but you can't see what it's following because there is nothing apparent for you as a viewer. But you know that there's audience. You hear flashlights. You see flashlights. So basically, there is a public situation, but there is no event for that public situation. That was the idea for the first two rooms, and then you come into um, the third room, which where you see uh, larger photographs again from life-size made sets. For me, they're all sculptures. One is a changing room, a locker room. The other one is a, a terrace, like coming from a private photo a photograph, like a, from a private photo album where you know you have a party. And the third one is called Grass. It's basically consisting of 72,000 blades made out of paper, which end up in a totally banal and simple and straightforward image of a lawn again. Then the next room, you just you might hear already, you may experience like a um, like a sinister melody in the background when you're standing in that gallery, which is uh, a, a, a fraction of a piece of the Beach Boys, Boys album, which got never released, called Smile. It's a quite a famous album because it's not, it hasn't been released and the few people which heard bits of it were, were saying that this is the best album of the 20th century but nobody ever put it together, nobody released it ever, nobody heard the whole thing in public. So I found bits and pieces in the internet of that one and I constructed a f basically a film to it and got this original piece of sec 17 seconds, it's called Bicycle Tune. <coughs> That's the data title, but I don't know whether that's the original title by Brian Wilson. I put this kind of very sinister looped piece of music. Uh, I, g I gave it to a friend of mine in Chicago called Pan American who does uh, a lot of electronic music. And he edited it up, like chopped it up, parallel to my practice of making an animation film. So the next film, the second film you see in this is, is an, a pure animation, so nothing is really moving. It's like 42 images of a, of a tape recorder but you see it through the classic t animation thing. You see this kind of little bit, you know, quirky movement of, a, of two reels spinning. So here, this is called Paul, and it, it gets to get, it, it's um, shown together with a, in a small cabinet, you have like four smaller images. It's a series of images around the, the, the recount in Florida. When I made this piece, I had a show in New York coming up, and I just, roughly about the time when George W. Bush got into into, uh, beca you know, became president. And um, I saw all these photographs, images of like paper being recounted and recounted, but the holes, are, you know, like how, whether there's a hole in there or not. But it was all about this kind of idea of a paper card being, you know, be, be, being decisive for the future of the world, basically. At that time, it was foreseeable that this is, this is going to be, this is most powerful man of the world, whatever happened afterwards. But 
Um, so I wanted to make a photograph right at the same time and I wanted to make sure that people which might have seen it in the morning in the newspaper, they come to the gallery and they see something about the space which they have seen in the newspaper in the morning which they might not have seen in the original source. It's because this one is bigger, it's life size and it's just like, you know, about like little quirky details like the torches on the desks and stuff. So this whole um, process of making an image after, like, you know, running after another image which has been printed at the same time is kind of a significant for a part of my practice in the last couple of years, where I just basically use the memory of, um, of events you have from newspapers and stuff. And I, I basically, I, because I know that we all know these events and we have like, you know, some ideas about the, the visuals coming next to it. Like if I mention Tunnel, for instance, or Lady Die and Tunnel, you know, you have a totally clear idea of the architecture of a subway in Paris, which is not so, it's, it's, first hand it's important for the, for the personal fate of Lady Die, but it's also um, quite important for us as individuals in a society that we can talk about these things and communicate about things which we both haven't experienced or only have experienced in the second you know, degree or something, in a, say, around the corner basically. And these things interest me quite a lot. It's like a, it's if you, as if you imagine like a, like a landscape painter in the 18th century, he would go out and he would, you know, choose a tree and paint the tree meticulously. And my landscape today, I, I um, consider as being things pictured, you know, like because I, there are possibly more images of the world now than world itself. And more, it's more, the, the producing, the industry of producing images is like increasing proportionally um, every day through the internet, through film, TV and all that. So basically I'm trying to find a way through this for myself and for, you know, trying to understand what images do to my, underst my um, understanding of myself and my society. And that's why I started to use other people's images, you know, making, translating them again from two, dimensional, um, from two dimen dimensions into three dimensions and making a sculpture out of that and then, and then bringing them back into two dimensions. And with this quirky detour, by leaving out like details, like little marks on the paper, and, and um, you know, also like sign signifiers for time, for certain uh, usage of people, I end up with this, with this hyper -re real feeling of a thing as it meant to be or something like that. And that's, you know, the, that's the perspective of, of things I'm trying to show you in this in this work